Tonight's uh, title is uh, Tales from the Trenches, Avoiding My Specialty Mistakes. And this is by Dr. Leslie Gallagher. Uh, I always think when I'm attending a lecture that I want to walk away with just one tip. Maybe two would really be a benefit. But I think the key thing that you're going to recognize this evening is you're going to get exposed to 10 tips. And you're going to have the opportunity, hopefully, to find them extremely interesting and to uh, walk away with that information. Uh, Dr. Gallagher has an interesting history. That, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not uh -oh. supposed, to be, it's not supposed to be funny, but I guess it is. And if we take a quick peek at her bio, that we can see that she uh, is a cornea and contact lens trained. She was um, at, uh, went to school at Southern College of, uh, Southern College, Southern California. California College of Optometry. And I know she makes a point of saying now known as Ketchum, uh, which is good as they're trying to change the brand, but we all know it as SCCO still. Uh, and then spent time in uh, Tahlequah uh, as a cornea and contact lens resident before uh, settling in uh, Holton, uh, Kansas. So uh, we're really very, very interested in hearing what Dr. Gallagher has to say, and I think you will all feel the same. Leslie, it's all yours. All right, thanks, Craig. Um, and then I'll turn my webcam off in just a second, but I wanted to show everyone that I'm wearing real clothes and not scrubs for the first time for like forever. Um, so when ABB asked me to uh, do this talk, the first thing I thought was, you know, here I am in the middle of, you know, nowhere, Kansas, and why do they want to ask me? Because there's so many, like, I just feel like the scleral lens industry and uh, our little sphere is full of so many, like, rock stars. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to have to share? But um my goals for tonight is hopefully to try to keep it as interactive. I know we're all zoomed out and and uh, webinared out, but to try to keep it, I'm encouraging everyone just to uh, send in your questions or comments, or if you have you know ideas that on this topic, then I'm totally open to to that. And um, hopefully, I'll show share with you a few tips, but then also to kind of keep it fun and interactive, just because you know. Uh, I appreciate you guys giving up your personal time because it's, um, you know, uh, every, we're just being pulled every which way. But um, so I think the reason I'm speaking is because uh, ABB and specifically my consultant, DD felt as though this is that I resonate really well with a lot of private practice doctors. And so uh I just kind of got to a point, I'm on my 20th year and uh, just doing a lot of primary care and I got burnt out. And it, the, I had an invite to go to the, which I think we'll talk about later, but there was a boot camp, the ABB host, that I just said yes. I never say yes to anything. And um, even though I was residency trained and did a fellowship and all that, I'm in the middle of a private practice and I'm not doing what I wanted to be doing. And I just found myself after all this time just, you know, didn't even really want to come to work. And so it came at the perfect time in my life. And um, I told Andy that as soon as I, Andy Jackson of ABB, when I got back, I'm just going all out with this. And and so I want to share, and I think that I went from probably the, one of the smallest accounts to probably, uh, which they can probably tell you when it's over, but I think uh, after the boot camp, my practice, my business with them grew tremendously. I think probably more than anyone else in boot camp. So, um, and it really benefited me uh, professionally too, and my staff. It just gave me, you know, uh, a boost and a uh, passion uh, that I had kind of lost for a while because I was, you know, just inundated with primary care. So, um, anyways, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen or my webcam just so I can stop looking at myself. But I just wanted to show you guys I did dress in real clothes and not scrubs. So, um, let's see. So that's, we get that. So here's some disclosures. Um, so the, what I thought I was an expert in is all the mistakes and reflecting back when I decided to just make this big jump and really go all in with not just scleros, but especially lenses in general. 
Um, so these are the, some of the things that I did wrong that hopefully uh, will benefit you and uh, expedite your process in uh, the specialty lenses. Um, the first one, uh, which I had done up till a couple of years ago, was I would uh, put these specialty patients in during my Monday through Friday primary care uh, clinic. And that was, I think for me, that was the number one thing that I changed. And what I did, for me, it's Fridays. And my goal is after we get through the back, back to school rush, I want to make it Tuesdays and Fridays. But every single Friday, it's only medically necessary or my specialty lens clinic. And I can't tell you, even long-term patients, the uh, the experience they had at the practice just seemed to be a lot more repeatable. Uh, it was more organized. It was a lot more predictable and flow. And then, you know, say I, I have a spot that's open. I specifically use that time to work on either, you know, appeal letters or billing coding or, or working on something. So that's the time or the block or the day that I dedicate to this. And then I also kind of a, another benefit is um, the ODs that refer to me. I kind of like that separation for them and just saying like, hey, I'm going to fit them and get them right back. So they're not kind of intermixed with our, our primary care, but it really helps the techs because um, everyone has that on the brain. Like this is what we're doing today. Similar to like many of you guys will do like a, you know, glaucoma clinic or something like that, but it's, it's uh, really helps it organization. So that was one of the big ones for me. The other thing, which I do, I've done this often, um, it's like, hey, I decide I want to I want to do this, but then I forget to include my team on it, or you know the other doctors in my practice, or you know everyone else will bring them or the referral sources. So um, I had been doing it for a long time, but I really wasn't getting a lot of referrals uh, for the past you know say 18 years. And so what I did is I just did a lot of um, you know googling and and looking at all the corneal specialists. Do they have a uh, fitter there? Do they have an optometrist or another fitter that's, you know, in their practice? And for, in the beginning, I wasn't going to send them letters. So I was like, why? Because, you know, they already have great fitters, you know, like uh, Dr. Jared Jaynes at Cavanaugh's in Kansas City. Why? But then, you know, they may have patients that they see that live a lot closer to me because, you know, we're about two hours away. So um, I let them know I was doing it. And they actually do send some to me just because it's not convenient for patients to be driving past my office to theirs. So, um, but I focused a lot on the corneal specialists that do not have fitters in their practice and then um, other optometrists, which, you know, I've always heard that optometrists are horrible at referring, you know, within optometry. And I really haven't found that. I mean, probably one of my biggest referral sources is a, a large uh, private equity group here in Kansas. And um, so that might be a good opportunity for private practice doctors is to look at the private equity groups because, um, you know, they have, you know, certain limitations that, you know, in certain private private equity practices that they, they just can't devote that time. They need to see so many of the primary care patients. And so um, I sent them to everyone. And I did have a little bit of verbiage difference between the ophthalmology versus the optometry letters. And, and I made, uh, you know, brochures up and, you know, made it as easy as possible. This is, you know, the ways uh, our referral network works and, and gave them the direct line to my, you know, head tech for specialty lenses. But um, the verbiage difference for the optometry was like, hey, you know, if they have a full exam, you know, refer them to me and I'll get them right back to you. And so I just kind of really emphasized I'm only in it, you know, and I'm sure a lot of you get this with referrals from other optometrists. They have such a good experience at your practice that, you know, like, oh, can't I just come here? It's like, well, no, we really can't. I need you to go back to your other doctor because, you know, blah, blah, blah. but um, really emphasizing that I'm going to get this patient. Like, I don't really need to steal a bunch of patients. I just want to see the, the specialty lens patients that they have and I'll get them right back to you to them for their primary care stuff. Um, and then sending summary letters back or even just calling the op optometrist or ophthalmologist and saying, hey, I saw this person today and it was, you know, blah, 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 or just, you know, some people appreciate a phone call, but I do send the summary letters back. Um, I set up a separate Facebook page, again, um, kind of helping the, the optometry referrals. But, um, and then you guys all know, I don't need to talk about the, to optimize the search engines and 
um, to get, you know, when keratoconus patients are, are looking for a new provider or someone, um, you know, bifocals or anything like that. So there's lots of different ways to optimize the search engines. And um, so, but I think just being intentional, just not, not just declaring kind of like on the office where Michael Scott's like, I declare bankruptcy. It's like, you just can't declare, I just want to do this. It does take a little bit of intention and, and getting out there and, you know, shaking the, the trees to, to get some referrals and, and uh, following, you know, getting them back to their primary care doctors. And so I'm, I'm really pleased. I knew I'd probably get some good referrals from ophthalmology, but I was, I'm really pleased at the amount of, uh, you know, within our profession, how many other optometrists in the area refer. And so that's awesome. And I, I really value those. Um, so this is kind of crazy. This was a mistake that I made is we have a three doctor practice. We did have an ophthalmologist that would come in once a month, but um, he's on medical leave for a while. But uh, I never really told the other doctors in the practice because it's, you know, we all do scleral lenses. We know the applications and all that. Um, not all optometrists know this and you you know you work alongside them every day and you assume that they know what you do you think you know what they do um but they really don't and so um having just a conversation with the other doctors you practice with and saying here's all of these you know like like i had one that was a congenital nystagmus patient and i just happened to be talking to you know my actually my business partner and she oh i have one of those and like she would have never thought to refer you know to our own practice to me and our own practice and so i really had to kind of backtrack and say these are the specific things um that you know scleral lenses or specialty lenses or you know these are these are the things that i love doing and these are applications and so um that was a really big one and so just within our own practice I was missing a lot of referrals there, which is kind of kind of awkward. But um, yeah, now I'm getting a lot of referrals from the other two doctors, which is great. Okay, that's that's terrific uh, and, and interesting. I know that in in most offices that interprofessional communication, um, you know, may not be working at the highest level, and that's a really good tip to to let not just staff know what's going on but the other professionals as well. So Dr. Gallagher, we have a couple of questions already. Um, uh, one is, do you know, you said that you set aside a day that you mm -hmm. want to schedule the specialty lens patients. Do you ever have any pushback from patients uh, that they can only come in on a Friday or whatever it might be that, that doesn't work for them? I mean, sometimes, not often. And if it's if it really doesn't work, then I will, you know, allow them to schedule. Not not typically the fitting, but if it's just a dispense or just a you know progress check or something like that, then then I'll you know we'll work them in throughout the week. But then, I mean, we I'm in very rural Kansas, so people drive a long ways and they understand you know the 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 limitations, but really I haven't had much pushback and I, I picked Friday, so I think maybe a lot of patients don't mind taking off work on a Friday. Who doesn't, you know, like getting off early on a Friday? But mm -hmm. um every now and then I'll I'll have someone that's um, you know, like I'm gonna be gone this next Friday on vacation. Can I come pick up the lens? Yeah, of course. But um, you know, it it all goes all that scheduling goes through my main especially lens tech and no, it's that's the only person that schedules those days, and so that we know how much time would be allotted. But um, that, not really. But occasionally, maybe you know, once a month, I may have to see someone. But my goal is to have two days. Sure, sure. Well, I, I think that's pretty good if it uh, ra rarely comes up. Uh, the second question is related to the referral letters that you send out. Uh, when you were trying to build the referral, did you just send one letter or did you have a campaign and send multiple letters over a period of time to different doctors in the referral area? Um, we sent, yeah, we actually sent kind of a gift package with, you know, an introduction letter, a bunch of referral um, packets, and we have a... Um, a lady here, she's a baker and she makes these cookies. And we, so we did like eyeball cookies and stuff. So we actually sent like a gift basket. And the ones that were nearby, we delivered. Uh, my tech, my head tech and I delivered. But, and then 
uh, I think six months later, we sent another, you know, just update out to uh, the doctors that were, you know, actively re uh, uh, referring. But um, and we sent cookies. Cookies worked really well. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, well, that sounds terrific. And and I thank whoever wrote this uh, question in because you know that you hit the nail on the head that that sending out referrals is not a one-time event right it's a process and mm -hmm. it has to be done continuously over a period of time uh to really be able to build it as of course uh, it appears that you've done so uh, that's all the questions for the moment thank you for those two questions and if anybody else has more for dr gallagher please write them in the question box Okay. So, and this is one I think that most of us would, would think of is, you know, when you're building your specialty lens practice is trying to go at it all on your own. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing I know when I was first starting out, I had all the time in the world to, you know, change light bulbs and to do this and to do that. But, uh, you know, as your practice grows and you're the, you know, you're being pulled in many different ways. Um, you really have to learn the the fine art of high level versus low level activities. And it it took me a while because I'm I'm a doer and probably an uh, I over over function in you know many aspects. And so instead of just doing it for staff, just say, hey, you know, what do you think would be a good option for this? And so and delegating and and um, with specifically with the scleral lenses. You know, I thought, okay, I know what to do because I just, you know, got back from this boot camp and it's going to take me forever to uh, train my staff to where I feel comfortable. And um, uh, ABB actually offered and DD and uh, another specialty lens uh, consultant came to my office and we, it was a fantastic day. It was probably one of the funnest days of training we ever had. And she, I mean, top to bottom, trained the staff on every, I was actually shocked. It was probably one of the most thorough trainings and enjoyable trainings we ever had. And I, three, I would, if I had to do it over again, I would probably have trained more techs just because, you know, someone's on vacation, and, you know, whatever you lose, someone moves out of the area, they're out on maternity leave, but um, that was great. And I felt very comfortable from day one after the training. Um, our staff knew how to train patients in search and removal care systems, how to do scans, how to do, I mean, just absolutely everything, how to handle questions from staff members. And um, so that was really great. So I would highly recommend, uh, yeah, I don't know if they're they're back online after uh, COVID, if they're doing in-office or, or virtual trainings right now, but that helped me a lot as far as moving a ton of stuff off my plate that, um, you know, it would have taken me a lot of time to, to train those patients myself. And then um, I also delegate, I, I briefly look over it, but delegating all of the, the billing and coding to my office manager and, um, you know, going through the training uh, that I learned at the SCI boot camp as far as, you know, the VSP, okay, now you have an ocular surface disease, now you have a, a you know, keratoconus, advanced, you know, mild, blah, blah, blah. And so uh, we actually created our own flow chart and if, and, uh, she has any questions, but I got that off because I hated doing that anyways. And uh, just over time, it took me a lot to learn to delegate the lower level activities because sometimes I felt like, oh, it's just easier for me to do it myself. But it over the long run, and then plus, you're, I feel like if you don't delegate, you're, you're sort of stealing joy from, you know, or professional enjoyment for for your staff. And I just think, you know, this is something that they could enjoy doing. You know, you look at like, oh, I I, I can do this, but you know what, they may enjoy doing that. And so it, it took me a while to become more comfortable, but it sure did help a lot with the uh, the ABB, the on-site training that they do for staff. I mean, absolutely amazing. It was a home run for that. And so, I know there's, you know, a variety I, I've used in the past GPLI and then all the, you know, probably all the labs probably have their webinars like this, this lecture is going to be recorded for, you know, forever and ever um, and available on the ABB site. But, um, you know, there's trainings at meetings that uh, I took a staff member, my head tech with me to GSLS and, and that was great. And, you know, 
just looking for lots of different uh, training opportunities because they're all they're all out there. But um, you know, it's it's one of those that it does take a little bit more work on the front end, but it's it really you know you just get to spend more time just interacting with patients and making recommendations, and that's really what what we're supposed to be doing. So another another uh, mistake I made was just assuming that all my patients that are educated and you know even patients I've been seeing for 10, 15 years, I think you know they're they're educated about their condition. And uh, if any of you guys ever have a chance, which I'm sure a lot of you are, because I see many of you trying to put out fires on the uh, the Facebook, you know, catechonus patient groups and stuff like that. But if you ever are questioning whether or not how educated patients are about their condition, then you know, take a look at that. And it really it serves as a reminder to me, like like for one, the one on the left is you know somebody posting their topography. And I thought, you know, sometimes I look over, but do I do I really go over that, you know, in depth with patients? Because apparently, you know, they they want this, and it, it makes me sad that they're posting that out there for strangers to interpret their topography. So um, that was kind of a little reminder to me, like, you know, hey, let's go through this. And this, even though you know you've seen them for ten years, they still they still want to see that and uh, those test results. But um, and then care, there's a lot of questions on care systems. Some of them are just, you know, you just, your eyes would bug out just seeing some of these, but like progent and, you know, do we want this? For, I, I wouldn't have ever thought to tell a patient not to do that with, you know, a hydropeg coating or whatnot. But the uh, down at the bottom is the doctor. He really never gives me recommendations for solutions. And that's, you know, I, I can believe that sometimes with standard lenses. I mean, I specifically try to make recommendations for that, but with these, we really need to make sure that they absolutely have zero questions. And, and if they have any questions, we want them, like we have weave at our office. And so, you know, we tell patients, you know, text with any questions at all. Lindsay will, you know, either Lindsay or I will get back to you with any of your questions. So we really don't want them out on social media um, because they're gonna get incorrect information most of the time. And then like like this one, um, you, many of you guys, this was just a recent one about uh, fluorescein, but then it led into this whole conversation of, you know, what is better, you know, the doctors that use fluorescein and slit lamp, which I admire that skill and I, I, I do both and I try to work on, you know, judging and then I, I take them back to OCT and I like, okay, and I, I am getting closer and closer, you know, judging the central clearance and things like that. but. But that um, patient kind of led into this discussion of which is better, the, the doctors that use the technology versus the doctors that don't. And so, you know, just talking it out with patients, just kind of like, like the pra one practice I bought, the doctor had never, ever charged a contact lens fitting fee, ever, not even for keratoconus patients, nothing. And so when I took that practice over, I made it uh, a you know, after the, the routine exam's over, okay, now this is over. Now we're going to start your contact lens fitting and blah, 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 blah. So actually talking it out, um, you know, gave value to the patients. But with this, you know, still like, oh, this is what I'm looking at. Just tell the patients, you know, what you're, you're looking at. Um, but there's just numerous examples of, and like like the one the other day is when, when neutrophil, I saw one where, you know, patients asking, you know, hey, I'm unable to get this. And it, it triggered me like, hey, we need to get a hold of all of our patients and let them know, hey, you know, you might have a little bit of trouble getting this. Here's some other options we'd recommend for you. And so um, uh, some of the time, you know, it'll be many of the same questions, but I think it's, it's it, it benefited me to work on my patient education, just seeing what questions are out there. In, at large. And so, yeah, most of the time you'll be doing this, looking at some of those, you're like, oh, you just have to kind of let it go. But, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of great doctors and fitters out there that will step in and give, you know, better advice to patients because it, it can go uh, south really quickly. And, you know, just, hey, why don't you get a hold of your doctor? And so I, I just hope to God, none of my patients will ever be out there asking. So that's that's my goal is to educate them so much either verbally and support that with paperwork and offer like, hey, we're here for you. And so they think to 
uh, reach out to us instead of reaching out to um, the interwebs. Okay, great, uh, fabulous tips. And and what's amazing about the things that you're relating tonight, that at times they seem obvious, and you've even mentioned this yourself, but of course it's they can be so easily overlooked in the busyness uh, of the schedule during the day. Uh, we had one question come in right away that said, how do you train your staff? But then you went into the whole layout of exactly how you did that, which I think uh, was fabulous. And I, I think if I can just make a comment here is that there, there really is a sea change that we're going through in medicine today where, where work is finally really being done at the lowest, most appropriate level within an office. And so in, in the eye care, in particular in the optometry office, utilizing the staff the way that Dr. Gallagher is talking is critical. Uh, patients are accustomed to it, uh, not necessarily seeing the doctor all the time for the work, uh, and enjoy having somebody that's in the office that is taking care of them. And Leslie, it looks like you really have that working quite well. Um, it's, you know, it's always a work in progress and, you know, you have a tech that's trained up and then they go on maternity leave. And so that's really the other thing is just, you know, having, you know, probably one person in charge, but, you know, many techs that, because they enjoy it. I mean, who doesn't, and I mean, it's such a, just a rewarding feeling helping many of these patients and the happy tears and all that. And so it's like, you know, staff love that. And that's, you know, one of the things is, uh, why they leave practices. They don't, they don't leave, they leave, uh, you know, for many different reasons. But one of them is job satisfaction. I just, I really feel like that we have a um, ability to give our, not only help patients, but to help our staff feel like they're making a difference also along with us. And, and so, um, and I've had many staff, they look so forward to Fridays. Like, uh, it's just, it's just a different vibe. And they're just so happy to, to be working on the Fridays that, you know, with the Specialty Lens Clinic. And so it not only, um, it just, it really helps with staff, you know, uh, retention and all that, because that's huge. I mean, who yeah. doesn't have la labor problems right now, so. Sure, that that's great. Uh, another question, uh, it's regarding the information that you use to educate uh, your patients. Uh, we mm -hmm. have a request, if it's possible, if there's any kind of handouts or paperwork sure. that you use, if it could be shared with uh, the audience. And if oh, the sure. answer is yes, we can sure make arrangements to, to oh, do yeah. that. And, and my, my care system is just a circle, circle, you know, it's like, um, you know, Boston Simplus or Clear Hair, and I just circle all these, you know, different sure. things on that. So that's, yeah, that's a really easy one pager that, that we do. And then, um, and then also, you know, I had I had one that uh, was just because, you know, majority of well, the scleral ones would be the keratoconus or pellucid. And so so many of them, it's it's really um, surprising how many of them are uneducated about their condition or what they've been actually what they've been told from other doctors. And you can have a very mild keratoconus. It's 2020, you know, glasses, you know, correcting glasses. And they're here for a, a scleral lens and they're thinking they're getting a. Know, transplant and so just you know stepping back and you know starting from from scratch and just re-educating them and just seeing you know what they know about their condition and and uh that we're teaming we're going to work together and improve their quality of life but yeah so I, I do handouts but also just um you know a lot of a lot more education than i did you know 10 years ago so yeah you know that um early in my career uh one of my mentors had said to me uh, that Craig, when you're involved in patient care, there's the three T's is what he called them. Well, the first one is he said, you need to touch the patient. That sounds kind of weird today, right? But what he meant was shake their hand or welcome them into mm -hmm. the exam lane. And the second T was to teach them, teach them something about exactly what they're there for today uh, so that they can walk away better educated. And then the third T was to tell them exactly what was going to happen next. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, and those words resonated with me throughout my whole career. Uh, so simple to remember, but yet so right on the mark as far as patient management. Yeah, and I think what to expect, I stole, um, stole this from the SCI boot camp is, and I tell every patient as we're beginning the process, I say, you know, that first lens, we're going to get in the 
right um, arena, maybe the right section, second lens, you know, definitely right section, maybe right row, um, you know, sometimes third seat. So it's that analogy has really worked well with my patients as far as like not being, you know, setting the expectation where you know, this is what all the follow-up visits are for. But yeah, the expectation um, definitely because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a relationship that we're building with these patients. And so kind of set the, you know, they're going to come back a few times because I want to get it perfect and I want to address all their needs. So. Sure. sure. That's actually okay. an excellent analogy. I hadn't heard that one before. Okay. So that's all the questions for this section. Okay. And then uh, another mistake, which um, is not pre-appointing these patients. And because what will happen when I do not pre-appoint them is 99% of the time, the next time I hear from them is when they broke or lost a lens. And that is definitely not how I want to, uh, you know, operate is, you know, just ordering something based on the last one and uh, getting them in and it's rushed. And, and so I always pre-appoint these patients and um, I stress the importance of backup, you know, lenses because it's just, I mean, just like this picture, you wouldn't drive around without a spare tire. And these patients are uh, very dependent on their glasses or their, their special lenses for correction. They can't see in their glasses. And so um, that's what I tell them. And, and we, and then plus also the practice side of it is many of these are, it's a, you know, a very, uh, as far as revenue per patient, these are, you know, one of the highest uh, revenue per patient. So why would I not want to see them back in a year and, and, uh, and, you know, address their needs again, but, and then of course, you know, the progression and, you know, need for refits in the, the future, but um, absolutely um, pre-appointing these patients. So that's uh, helped me. And it's, it's kind of like an annuity, you know, it's like you build it and you build it and it's just, it's, it grows year over year. That's, that's the hope, you know, if we're able to, um, you know, satisfy, you know, their expectations and take care of their needs and, and have a good experience in our office, then, you know, ideally we'd want them coming back year over year. So, but um, certainly pre-appointing those, especially, especially the, the VSP and the IBED patients is, that's a, a hundred percent. They're going to be pre-appointed for one year. Um, this was a kind of a costly, one of the more costly mistakes I made was, um, up until I, I know I keep going back to this SCI boot camp, but it really was probably, I mean, it was a very intensive weekend, but um, I not only just the technical side of it, but what I gained the most being in private practice was the billing coding side of this. And it just, I mean, just opened my eyes. But we, at the time when I went, I actually had a outside billing company. When I say had, <laughs> you'll see. Um, but I assume that they knew because they're a professional billing company to how they bill, uh, how to bill these. And then after I got back from the boot camp, I realized, you know, this company has never asked me once, you know, what lens, what lab did I order it from? What, you know, nothing. I thought, so I had my um, manager go back and look, wouldn't you know, box 19, since I had been using them, had never been filled out. So thankfully, I was able to go back and uh, resubmit those claims, um, you know, the ones that were timely enough to resubmit. I think I, I almost like $5,000 we recouped just from resubmitting a few claims. But um, yeah, so that was a big mistake that I had is just, you know, letting the other people worry about it. And, you know, it's uh, because I love doing this so much and we're so busy in our primary care practice that... I really have an obligation to make sure that Fridays are as more or as or more profitable than, you know, Monday through Thursday. And so uh, that made a huge difference for me is um, myself learning and making sure that the people that are doing it for me understand it. And uh, because I can guarantee that most don't. And then another thing was using the same flow or the same equipment that we use in um, you know, the Monday through, th I say Monday through Thursday for me clinics. And here's some of the things that I found most useful that kind of helped my efficiency and organization. But the uh, table on the right, I use that for um, insertion removal. And so, and when we all know, especially the scleral lenses, how much, you know, stuff that it, it takes, you know, you've got, we use a little, uh, 
like a surgical paper tray, like a uh, square thing we put down and you had the, you know, all the solutions and the plungers and all that. And I, most of, I have big exam lanes, but I don't really have the room for all of that. And I don't, it would take way too much time to walk them to the contact lens training area. So I, I got a couple of those little adjustable tables for some of my rooms and I just, the patient stays in the exam lane. I wheel it right over to them and have their little mirror and everything's right there. And it, it really works great. And so it, it uh, eliminates having to move patients out of the room frequently. And then the little carts, I have that. I, I meant to take a picture and actually put mine, but on the very bottom, I have some of my, my um, diagnostic sets down there in the middle. I'm looking at it right now. Um, I have all of my Addy packs and uh, filling solutions. And up top, I've got my um, plungers and a little basket of plungers and all that. But And so I have two of those trays and I just wheel it in because I don't want all that stuff sitting out, you know, my Monday through Friday, just because, you know, it's just a lot of stuff to, you know, on shelves or on your, your exam table. So, and then um, the far left, I have something like this. Well, my, my lead tech, I should say, and this is how we kind of organize where patients at in the process. So like, you know, one of the ones on the upper left might be, Hey, we got a referral. Um, we need to reach out to this patient and schedule it, or there's something we're waiting, or maybe a patient called, but we're waiting uh, for referral papers. And then, you know, it's like, oh, they had their first visit and now we're waiting on the lens. So it just kind of follows through there. We don't use charts for the rest of the practice, but I actually have these little plastic folders that um, we stick in there just so we can follow along and make sure everybody, no one falls through the cracks. And, and um, you know, it's like, hey, this person's, been here we ordered their lenses three and a half weeks ago and our, our goal is to you know contact the lab before patients contact us like hey where's this out you know so that's that's kind of the goal to have a um you know to make it as efficient as possible and as organized as possible and then you know on the other side it might be um this is the you know the ones that have been billed we're waiting here from insurance this is the one that i might have needed to write an appeal on and so um however you know, whatever your flow is through the office, but I, I did discover that I can't use the same flow that I use for, you know, soft contacts or, you know, other things. And so that really helped us become a lot more organized so we can actually look and we have little uh, date stickers we stick on there so we can kind of make sure that, you know, it's being taken care of in a timely manner. So, um, but yeah, those are kind of the three little, and I got them all on Amazon. You know, I think the table is maybe 60 bucks, the cart six, you know, so it's very minimal investment, but it really helped kind of organize um, the flow and uh, become more efficient in my practice. And so this is a, you know, a difficult one. Of course, like when I was talking about early about pre-appointing, you know, IMED and VSP patients, those are great. Oh my gosh, they're great. I have no problem after that boot camp. Whoo, I see that. And, 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 you know, to be honest, that's one reason why we have not dropped the rest of our office is busy enough with, you know, cash pay patients or otherwise that we probably would, this is sad, we probably would drop VSP and IMED had it not be for uh, the specialty clinic. And it's just, it's so easy and I love it. And it, it's the way insurance should work. However, with medical insurance, even though, you know, it should be covered, it's like, like my uh, I can think of one that's a that little girl that's a, a congenital nystagmus patient I, with glasses. I think she was 2100 with, uh, you know, a larger, thicker corneal GP. I think we got her down to like 23 years. So the best, I mean, it was tears, mom's crying, the little girl's crying. She's, you know, can, you know, hopefully legally drive a car, blah, blah. But man, that insurance did not um, back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, come to find out that's not one of the approved codes. And so, um, but in and that one, I kind of felt, you know, I felt okay about and, and, you know, we're going to write that one off, but, you know, lesson learned any of those medical insurances, I will uh, collect all the data and go through, have everything ready to go. And then I have actually a discussion with the patients. And, you know, I found patients are pretty, um, open to, to this concept because uh, no one's insurance pays for what they used to pay, you know, five, 10 years ago. And so I'll, I'll tell patients, okay, here's the deal. You obviously have a condition that 
requires these medically necessary contacts. There's no doubt about it. And look how much like these initial tests that we did, you know, you went from 2200 or 2400 down to 2025. Wow, this is clearly, you know, a medical necessity. However, medical insurances tend to not pay with this. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to, I'm not going to order anything yet. We'll submit it. You will get an EOB back. Most likely if it says, you know, paid zero, that you'll know that they denied it. And you call on your end. And as soon as you get that, you know, flip your card over and you start making calls and I'll start, you know, sending letters and maybe perhaps together. And you know what I found is when I start that conversation, um, I'd say at least half the time patients are like, eh, you know, I, I, and, and then I'll also offer our other option, which is a cash pay discount, a prompt pay discount, if, if they pay the same day. This is the medical insurance we're talking. And surprisingly, even patients, I thought, no way, they're going to, they just said, yeah, my insurance is done. I just pay cash for everything. And um, so that helps uh, kind of drive my cash pay. Um, patients for this medically necessary contact lenses, but um, it's really sad. It kind of frustrates me. And sometimes, you know, I will be, I'll, I'm the doctor that will write letters and letters and elevate it, which that's another thing I learned at that boot camp is if you um, cite a clinical study, you know, talking about the applications or this is a treatment for this, it elevates it to the appeal person that actually knows something about eyes. But um, and then, you know, another thing that's funny is that one of my um, post-RK patients is actually an executive at Blue Cross in Topeka. And, you know, okay, we're fitting the, it's like, well, here's the deal. And the, and it was so funny because why don't they pay? I go, I don't know. Why don't you go to work and, and ask around because, um, so, but, but instead of dispensing those lenses and trying to collect two months later after the person's already has it, it's, it just puts, makes you look like the bad guy. And um, so it's, I'm gonna work with them and we're gonna try to get them to, you know, uh, pay for this medically ne necessary, you know, treatment. Um, but, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. And uh, the VA is one I can think of that, um, but surprisingly patients, you know, they experience this every which way they go. And so they just say, you know what, I'm just gonna, okay, great, you have a cash pay discount, okay, here. And if they can't afford it, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll start submitting it. You do your thing, I'll do my thing. And um, that's been a lot, lot better. And it's um, for us, instead of having a patient, you know, sending, we don't wanna send a patient to collections. And, you know, so sometimes, you know, it's difficult, it's more difficult to collect after they've already had the, the processes complete, so. Um, so this is another one. This is funny because so my my rep that I deal with mainly with the sclerals is Dee Dee, and she's actually on this call. And I have another rep that um, that I deal with for the inter, you know the limbal the dinantral limbals, and I have another one GP. But but um, Dee Dee's my go-to person with the the sclerals, and she's phenomenal. She's uh, who trains my staff coming in, so we have a really good relationship, very close. Um, which that's what it's about. I mean, I think that's why you know many of you have labs of choice and and like before abb i used larry and Essilor out of tulsa and because i had a personal relationship with him and he retired and and you know i want to know when i pick up the phone or uh, that person on their line is knowledgeable that they're experienced that they're you know capable that they're everything and um and so i really found that with dd and but anyways so um she was on vacation a year ago and I knew she was on vacation. And, and so I sent her an email and in the email, I just said, I know you have a lot of probably a bunch of crap on your desk, but Hey, this and that. Well, it was funny because um, that in that email was an order for a patient. And about three and a half weeks later, we picked up like, Hey, we haven't received this one order. So then I emailed her back. I said, Hey, did you ever get this? Cause nope, I didn't get it. So we started investigating it. Well, the um, ABB has a filtering like an email filtering software that filters out curse words and so i had apparently written crap and that got filtered out and she, she never um so be aware if you uh um you know order or discuss things on email so you want to watch that or maybe that's just a tip that's specific for me but um yeah we had a, a order that was delayed because of uh 
crap in my email to her. So that's my number 10, but. Okay, so that's there's great. Probably especially, a lot of questions on that. Especially number 10. I think I'll clean up yeah. my email uh, strategy immediately. <laughs> um, and that's why, why I guess I'm not getting a lot of responses to certain things. Yeah. Uh, thank you to those that have uh, provided more questions. Uh, please continue to ask them, um, if you will. Um, one was kind of a flippant question. Are you still working with the outside biller? No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Absolutely <laughs> not. That was the answer. Another one was related to your Friday schedule, uh, just so they could be clear. So on Fridays is specialty only. Contact lenses yeah. are being done all through the week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The right. standard contacts are being done, but yeah, we try to um, have any of our, you know, scleral. I mean, some of the GPs like it. Sometimes staff gets confused if they it's just a regular GP throughout the week. Yeah, and but they'll ask me, and and my lead tech knows. But um, most of the, you know, the referrals I get in and out, and some of the, you know, like um, like for instance. Um, which I don't know if they're going to talk about. So beyond specialty um, sclerals are, you know, some of the the soft that I have done a lot with ABB, but, you know, like a, a aphagic that's a prosthetic contact or something like that. I want those on Fridays because I, I devote more time and I know that it's not going to be rushed, but um, yeah, so it'll be Fridays. Sure. Well, the other thing that happens is you have somebody that, uh, you don't have somebody sitting in the waiting room that is spending $2,000 for a fitting for contact lenses sitting next to somebody who's getting a daily disposable soft lens and yeah. wondering, wondering what the big difference is in the costs. Uh, we yeah. did have a couple of questions regarding billing. Um, one is, uh, how did you learn about the billing and where were the resources for it? And I'm gonna actually add the, the next question along with it because I think it'll play into it. Uh, what is the SCI bootcamp? Um, well, the billing, so up till the SCI, the main thing I would use is Clark Newman's on like GPLI. I always look for his and, and you know, when I go to big meetings, I think that's a big um, uh, area of opportunity for some of the larger meetings is to really have some good billing coding. And I'm not saying it's me. I'm not, I'm not um, saying I want to do it. I'm just saying, uh, that that I think is an area of you know need because so many people have technical knowledge of this, but then you know as, if you're not working, if you're in a private practice setting, you could lose money very very rapidly. And so, um, so I Clark Newman's on GPLI. I know there's some good webinars I've watched before, but um, the SCI bootcamp, which I think they they'll probably talk about here in, in but it was maybe a three day. I went to Nashville and I mean intensive like. You're going to sit down, you're going to look at, okay, say someone that has anisometropia. Okay, let's work through a VSP claim. Let's work, I mean, like literally screenshots of every, you know, on the um, claim online. Here's an IMED. IMED's a paper form you fax in. Okay, let's work through that. Let's work through, they, you know, go through Blue Cross things like that. And so, but then they do that for every condition, mild keratoconus, blah, blah, blah. So that, that helped me tremendously because I had, I honestly had no idea um, all of this, but then not only that, there was a, a big area of opportunity I was missing for the higher prescriptions for the visually necessary. So medically necessary, a lot of us probably know, but there's this whole area that I was missing in my Monday through Friday clinics on these visually necessary, you know, someone that has like a, a minus 10. Oh my gosh, did you uh, like, the way I would bill it, you know, they would only have gotten $120 of their benefits. If you go through the steps and, and um, bill it as visually necessary, those patients are, you know, they're entitled. So, and so many patients are like, well, that's one good thing about having horrible eyes. And um, so then not only the medically necessary, but learning about the visually necessary billing coding at SCI. Okay, that is terrific. Um, so keep the questions coming. Uh, we did want to just move on for just a bit and in, uh, introduce uh, Didi Reyes. Uh, if we can move on to the uh, next slide, uh, that is great. Uh, Didi has also been introduced multiple times by Dr. Gallagher this evening. That was nicely <laughs> done. Uh, and I'm sure Didi uh, appreciates it. 
Uh, Dee Dee leads the consultation department uh, at ABB and just wants to take a couple minutes of your time to uh, talk about the um, ABB products in the category we're discussing tonight. And we'll also address this SCI stuff uh, that was brought up by uh, Dr. Gallagher. Dee Dee, welcome. Thank you guys very much. Uh, thanks, Dr. Gallag Gallagher. Great job, um, as always, breaking it down and keeping it real. Keeping um, it real. I do appreciate that always. Um, Dr. Gallagher and I worked together for about the last two years and um, have really worked together to, to build that relationship that she was talking about and to help, to help her build her practice. So we're going to talk about some of the educational resources that she touched on. We're going to talk about some of our products as well. So if you'll go to the next slide. Um, we ABB has one of the largest industry portfolios in the business, and we do cover um, a lot of educational needs as well as uh, contact lens needs. So we do have staff training webinars. Uh, we can do some in-office type training as well, um, specialty business reviews. We have access to a phenomenal consultation team um, that specialize in a multitude of different lenses. Um, we can do wet labs, in-office wet labs and virtual wet labs um, if your office is not completely opened up yet. And we do lunch and learns not only for practitioners, but also for um, the staff as well. So we do have a, a huge majority of GP lenses and soft custom lenses that Dr. Gallagher touched on a little bit as well. Uh, we do have our own in-house manufactured uh, soft lens uh, designs for both standard lenses, toric lenses, and a multitude of different materials. So we can make any of those soft custom lenses that you that you need in your practice as well. So next slide. Part of the educational resources that we have for you are on our educational resources page on our website, and that's abboptical.com backslash specialty education. On that particular piece, there is a form that you can fill out to request in-office training or staff training or webinars or anything. It gets, us, gets you in contact with our consultation group or with me to get that education into your practice. And all of that can be specialized to your practice depending on your needs. So next slide. Part of the things that we do um, have on the specialty lens education is our we can go through our product catalog and make sure that we match the products to your practice. Uh, we have a webinar on getting started in specialty lenses that has a lot of tips and pearls in it for getting started in your specialty practice. We can go through product specific education for ICD flex scleral lenses or Europas or some of the other scleral lenses that we have available. Um, if you're just getting started and haven't chosen a particular product that you like yet, we can go through basic scleral education and troubleshooting. Um, just to kind of give you an idea, if you haven't really worked with sclerals, what scleral lens fitting is all about. We have product specific troubleshooting. If you're having you know, issues with a particular product, we can work through that as well. And we do these basic scleral staff education pieces. And it's a, a three part piece um, takes generally about 40 minutes over a lunch. We can do what they call lunch and learns or uh, virtual training. And we include insertion and removal training, how to take care of diagnostic sets, um, what solutions are proper with scleral lenses, some of the do's and don'ts with sclerals and how to educate your patients. We provide um, forms and things to help you build the practice as well. And the third piece of that is the instrumentation piece where we can teach your staff how to utilize topography or take good topography images, how to uh, take good OCTs and where to take an, a good OCT for the practice or for the, the scleral lens patient and how to really build that in. We can even go into slit lamp uh, photos and things like that if you need us to. So next slide. Something new for us as well is we have our dry eye education. It's specific to dry eye. So we can talk about how to build your dry eye practice or what the, the uh, products and things we have in our portfolio. For that, we actually have a, a specific dry eye consultant that can help with a lot of your needs. Um, her name is Jordan Davidson. And we can also do basic staff education, you know, how to find a dry eye, how to uncover these patients and things like that if you're interested as well. 
Next slide. This is a lot of what um, Dr. Gallagher was talking about was the Scleral uh, Con Consultative Institute. Um, it's our SCI, it's a, a, our Scleral Lens Boot Camp. Um, we've just scheduled this. It, it is very limited. It's limited to about 10 practitioners um, per time. Um, we do have that coming up in October and it is located in Nashville. If you're interested, you can reach out to me at uh, dreyes at abboptical.com and we can uh, work through that for you um, if you have interest in the SCI. Um, we do have live webinars like we have tonight. We have recorded webinars um, on our uh, web page as well. Uh, virtual wet labs, we do these with a number of practitioners. We can do this almost like a FaceTime uh, aspect with virtual wet labs. We do virtual fits the same way. If you have um, patients that you really want to work with and you're not as familiar with a particular product, we can utilize um, FaceTime and other things like that to do virtual fits with you. And we also have on our ordering section, we have live chat. This is your specialty consultation team. We have a number of team members on this group. They all have a ton of uh, experience with a multitude of lenses and can answer just about any questions that you have. You can see that a number of these people have more than 20 years of contact lens experience. Um, in the industry. So uh, many of them are certified and can work with almost any product on the market. Some of the products that we have in our portfolio, I'm going to run through this pretty quickly. Um, of course, we have our scleral lens designs. Uh, we have a number of gas permeable products available, uh, hybrids and soft custom lenses. We have our dry eye products um, and our new biologic drops that are available as well. Um, one of the things that we do have an advantage of is we actually, with any of our new scleral lens orders, we provide these scleral lens packs or starter packs for your scleral lens patients. So anytime you order a new scleral lens out of one of our manufactured products, you'll get one of these uh, kits to get your patient started. These are a list of some of our manufactured lenses that we have, and you'll see we, but we have, again, a multitude of in-house manufactured products. Um, for irregular cornea, uh, both in soft and GP lenses. We distribute also for a number of companies in, multi, in uh, multifocal lenses, in uh, orthokeratology, some scleral lenses, as well as hybrids. Our soft lens, our custom soft lens division, uh, we manufacture many of these lenses, in, again, in-house so that you can, we can get these to you very rapidly. The turnaround time for some of these custom soft lenses is, is, is as little as five days, usually five to seven days we can have them out to the practice. And they fit on either side of your standard soft lens or multi-packaged patients. So these are available in all kinds of parameters and uh, customizations for you as well. Uh, we do have some retail opportunities. This is relatively new. Um, when it comes to product sales and increasing compliance and profit in the practice. And I know Dr. Gallagher touched on that a little bit about creating compliance in the practice. Again, we have these scleral lens starter kits that come with all of your um, new patient scleral lens orders that include scleral saline, the tangible uh, clean multi-purpose solution, um, contact lens cases, inserters and removers are all in that kit. And that kit can be purchased and then sold to, um, to your other patients as well, or additional as travel kits. All of the products in that kit are available through ABB um, in larger uh, products. So this is a, the Vibrant View Scleral Saline is a 100 single 5 mil vials um, that's available for you. It's preservative free and can be used with any scleral lens. The Tangible Clean and Tangible Boost are also available. Um, tangible Clean is a multi-purpose solution that we use for scleral lenses or any gas perm or even soft lenses. Uh, tangible Boost is a restorative product for any lens that is tangible hydropeg coated um, to increase the wettability and the comfort of, uh, of GP or scleral lenses. We do have a number of dry eye products as well. Again, if you're interested in those dry eye products, you can reach out to any of us or go on to our um, dry eye website. Um, at our ABB website, we have a, a dry eye site that you can go to and learn a lot about um, these products as well. 
The biggest thing that we have on the market right now is our Regenerize Light product. Um, and it is a biologic. Uh, many of you may be familiar with the Regenerize Pro, um, which is again, another biologic product that's available. And we have Regenerize Light available now and Regenerize Pro is coming soon. Any questions for us on product? Edie, you know, I'm always amazed when I hear that presentation. I think you could shorten it significantly by just listing what you don't carry. <laughs> True. <laughs> because it really does cover from uh, A to Z within the products, not only uh, in the contact lens arena, but of course, you know, this latest endeavor in both lens care and uh, in dry eye. Uh, we're getting ready to close here in just a minute, and anybody has any additional questions either for uh, Dee, Dee Reyes or for Dr. Gallagher, please let us know right now. If we could go to the next slide, please, for just a second, I would just like to make mention uh, to those of you that are uh, attending that on the ABB website, there is listed uh, all of the previous recordings in this webinar series, and within the next few days will be tonight's webinar as well. If you go to abboptical.com uh, and the Practitioner Resources page, uh, you can find these. We've had a terrific run of these uh, as we've been doing these over the last couple of years with some unbelievable speakers, great content like we've had uh, tonight. And uh, you not only get the opportunity to uh, look at the recorded webinar, but there's a handout of the slides, which will be part of what we will be uploading here in the next few days as well. Plus there's a side interview, uh, like uh, there will be a side interview with Dr. Gallagher asking her a couple of key questions that are in a uh, written form that are always quite uh, interesting uh, as well. <laughs> Uh, if I could uh, just go to the last slide then, and I'd also like to make mention that coming up uh, in three months uh, is another one of the uh, ABB Specialty Contact Lens uh, webinar series, uh, and this one is Scleral Lens Fitting Secrets Revealed. I can't wait. We've just gone through 10 tips, and now we get to see fitting secrets revealed. And, and I'm expecting it will be just as interesting as tonight's was. Uh, this is with uh, Dr. Katie Brown, uh, who's at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. And uh, you can either make note of the date and time, or of course, you will be communicated with uh, as well, um, you know, beforehand because of your involvement in tonight. Dr. Gallagher, do you have any closing comments? I do not. Yeah, th I'm, yeah. thanks for inviting me here. I'm, it's glad to get in out of the house and, and start getting back, you know, at this. I'm, I'm just thankful to ABB for sending me to the SCI and, and where I've got my mojo back and, and uh, uh, I just would highly recommend, especially the billing and coding is so many doctors out there are, are just very proficient with the technical side of it but uh, struggle with the billing and coding. And I'm telling you, it is it is a very thorough um, thorough uh, weekend and very intensive, but it's also, they make it very enjoyable. So um, I owe a lot of the success that I have, of course, to, to, a, to ABB and to DD, so. And, and so thanks so much for your participation. It's been terrific. And I know on my personal notes tonight, I had multiple tips to walk away, so I was satisfied. As well. <laughs> Thank you everybody for attending tonight. Thanks so much to Dr. Gallagher and for Didi for providing us with terrific information. And I hope that we get the chance to see you all live instead of in webinar form soon. Good night, everyone. Yes. All right, good night. Thank you.